Okay, friends, we are in the middle of uh, the series La Letter to Corinth. And I'm really excited to introduce you this topic uh, because it's about community. Maybe you are in a community, uh, in your student community, or maybe you are in your, have a community, or hopefully you have a community in your marriage uh, that you, you share life together. Uh, my son is often asking me, or does often ask me, Daddy, why do you set rules? Why do you determine the rules for my community or for our community? Because we have, for example, one rule that you only should watch 30 minutes at TV a day when he is going to school, yes? And he's 14 right now. And he asked me, he's asking me, why do you set this kind of rules? And then I say to, I say to him, uh, first of all, I am your father, yeah? <laughs> okay? And the second thing, I earn all the money, so I, I determine the rules. And the third thing is, I really love you. And when you have boy, maybe once also a household and uh, your wife and you have children, then you can set your rules, what you will do. Every community needs rules. So sometimes you are really influenced by a community or when something happens in a community like Great Britain actually, they are celebrating what? Great Britain? The princess, yes, the princess. Do you know the name? No? She does not have any name. She's only the princess. Princess, maybe in two or two or three days we know more. But a whole a whole country is excited about that. And my father, he is in his 80, he's 87 years old. He said, I will I will be flying to to London and go to and he said, Kate, Kate. He says, Kate, Kate. <laughs> I will go there and I will see her. You know, in a community you, you experience a lot of good things and bad things and uh, and it's a challenge to be in a community. In 2 Tim Timothy 2.5, in the same way, says Paul, Paul, Apostle Paul, anyone who takes part in a sport doesn't receive the winner's crown unless he plays by the rules. So you can't win without the rules. Maybe you were in a soccer team and you had to follow all the rules and it was necessary because you wanted to be part of this team. And you had to follow the rules. Maybe you have watched uh, FC Bayern. Have you watched FC Bayern this week? Who of you is uh, watching uh, football or soccer? Yeah? So FC Bayern, it, it, was, it was crazy. Yeah? They wanted to try to, 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 have, uh, to put uh, one goal in, in, into the goals, uh, but it was not possible. Four times they had the chance. It was really hard to see that. So what you can write down, every human community needs rules. You can write down in your outline, and you can bring it at home, and you can learn more about the Bible. Every human community needs rules. For example, in a summer camp, or when you go attend, attending a summer camp, then you have to follow the rules. When I was young, I didn't like the, the rules. Maybe you this. So you don't go to a church and, you, and they ask you, and you want to ask them, tell me the rules, Pastor Dan. I'm so excited about the rules from ICF. I don't think that you like that too much. But we need rules. In Acts 2.42 is written, the believers studied what the apostle taught. They shared life together they broke bread and ate together, and they prayed. It was one of the models for the early church. They were together, they, they listened to the sermons, uh, and they want to improve, and they want to learn more. That was the role model. And Apostle Paul says, hey, dear Corinthians, something happened in this community in Corinth. So you have, you don't follow uh, Jesus rules because the rich are together. They do not care about the poor. Uh, you have sex scandals. You have a lot of uh, judgmental things in your church. And, and you are not together. You are not one community. And this is a problem, dear Corinthian. 
And that's what Paul wrote about the Corinthians. And listen to Leo, he was there in Corinth, and he explains us what happened also in this church in Corinth. I'm standing here in front of the St. Paul Church in Corinth. This is a Greek Orthodox Church. They have built it for the Apostle Paul. It's a beautiful church. And I have to tell you, I love the church because the church means for me, it's like a huge and a big family. We are sticking together and we want to follow together this Lord and Master Jesus Christ. The first church in Corinth, they had a tremendous start. People got saved, God created and made a lot of signs and miracles, people got healed. It was an amazing church. But Paul heard there were four split dangers in the church. Danger number one was they had in the church different groups, people who believed in different theology. And the second danger was some people said, my spiritual gift is much more important than yours. And the third split reason what they had was the sexual immorality in the church. And the fourth split reason what they have was people had fight with each other in the church, but they solved these problems in a worldly court. But this was not everything. Paul one day heard that one man in the church had sex with his mother-in-law. Then Paul heard it, he said, hey church, we are a family. Where is the difference between the church and the people who are living outside of church, they're not believing in this transforming, changing power of Jesus Christ. And Paul said, when we are not having a clear line, the church will, will fall apart and there's no changing power anymore in these na nations and cities. And now Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11, the following words. But now I'm writing you that you must not associate with anyone who calls himself a brother but is sexual, immoral, or greedy, an idolater or a slanderer, a drunkard or a swindler. If such a man do not even eat. And Paul said, it's not about the grace of God. God is a God of grace. But when we have people in the church, they not say, I want to live a holy life. The church has no power at all to reach people for Jesus Christ. And he said, let's make a decision. Let's kick out some people, they're not living a holy life. And we can experience that people will follow Jesus Christ abundantly. So as Leo said, that there was a guy, he had sex with his stepmother. Normally you have a lot of problems with your stepmother, but he had sex with his stepmother. Uh, already in, in the Old Testament we read, May any man who has sex with his sister be under the Lord's curse. It doesn't matter where she is, a full sister or his half sister. And the same, uh, you, you, don't have, you shouldn't have sex with your mother or mother-in-law uh, mother or stepmother. So it's, it was not allowed to do that, otherwise you will be stoned. It was an incest law in the Old Testament. Maybe you heard that, that here in Germany, there's a party called the Green Party. Yeah? The um, Grüne Partei? Yeah? Yeah, okay. And, uh, and they announced two years ago, Hans Christian Ströbele from the Green Party said we should weaken the incest paragraph. Sex between siblings should be legalized. And also the, the Green Party, the, the, the youth from the Green Party, they goes even further and they said that they want to have sex also between parents and grown children should be allowed because uh, otherwise uh, it, it hinders the sexual self-expression. So that was the explanation of this party, of this younger, of this youth group of this party. And maybe you have never heard about this, but it's really crazy. When, when we do something like this, this is not really good because it's like, uh, like when, you, when we change uh, the, 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 the destination, when you fly, when you are 
on on a on a on a on a on an airplane and you you change for some reason the destination and it, it goes 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 like this and uh, the same is when we when we are going more and more further away from God and his law it's not really cool in 1 Corinthians 5 we read it is actually reported that there is sexual sin among you i i'm told that a man is living with his father's wife and is having sex with her. Even people who do not know God don't commit that sin. So it was like, whoa, it was not normal in the Roman Empire that they do that. Maybe you heard that from Mar Marcus Tullius Cicero. He was a historian and he wrote uh, that when someone had incest with someone, uh, like in, uh, in, 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 among the family, then they should be cursed from the state. So it was not normal in this time having sex with his type mother. So it was not normal at all. In 1 Corinthians 5 we read, It is my business, it is, is it my business, sorry, to judge those outside the church? Aren't you supposed to judge those inside the church? God will judge those outside, scripture says, Get rid of that evil person. This is really very not so easy, yes? When you read this passage, who of you have ever experienced that in church that someone was kicked out by the leadership? It's not really a cool thing to get rid of a person that you think, oh, he is doing an evil thing because every one of us is a sinner, not that. You know, when I was a student, a theology student, it was one morning, normally we went to the church every morning, yes? We had to go every morning to the church. I, was, I studied for five years. I had to go to the church, the chapel, uh, and we had a, a, a small sermon, uh, a 20 minutes service in the morning. And then in one morning, everyone gave us a stone. And I thought, whoa, what's that? It's a little bit crazy in the morning. You get a stone. And then someone was coming forward on the stage and is crying. It was a student. And, and a girl with him, she had a belly, yeah? But not a normal belly, a, a baby belly, yeah? And then they cried together and they, they, have, they had sex. And for some reason she got pregnant and it was crazy. And then another student came and said, we shouldn't uh, punish them, we shouldn't judge them, preacher, prejudice them. But the consequence, consequence of this was he couldn't be a pastor, he didn't become a pastor. That was my first time that I, whoa, that I said, whoa, okay, it's not easy. How do we handle this in Isaac Stuck or what do we expect? I want to explain it in a few minutes, Okay. And uh, you can write it down, because I want to explain it with circle, like this. I brought you a circle. We have one circle. The circle of, uh, of uh, accountability is the pastor's team, the core team, and also the lead the leaders team. Lead the leaders are those who, those leaders who are leading leaders beneath them. Okay, so we have one circle and we think, okay, that's one circle of accountability. When you want to be a pastor or want to be a leader, leaders in our church, then we expect something. And I want to introduce with that. In First Timothy 3 is written, here's a saying you can trust. If anyone wants to be a leader in the church, he wants to do a good work for God and people. You know... I think it's always a good, everyone has the ambition to give their best, or we have the ambition to give our best. But it's a good work, leading a church. You have to, okay, uh, like me, you know, I'm a pastor. I, I have only to work on Sunday, yeah? It's very an easy job. I don't understand that you don't want to become a pastor. <laughs> you know, my mother said yesterday, Dan, we do not have too much pastors. In Europe, we should have more. And I said, I've never heard that. 
can you say it to me again? Yeah, I heard it, yes. But I wanted to hear it from, hear it from you, her, yes? Well, yes, we need more and more pastors. Didn't you know that? The fact is only one day, yeah? It's really a very easy job, yeah? It's a good job. I really love this job. Just kidding, yeah? It's more to do than only on, sun uh, on Sundays. It's a big job. Because when you are standing here, you sh should have your life a little bit under control. The thing is, you should also explain sometimes or telling something about your weaknesses, but not too much, you know? I, I have weaknesses. I have, I have many weaknesses. But when I am a pastor, I can't do everything. So I'm not like a CEO. Uh, a CEO can have three or four wives. It's no problem at all. <laughs> but me, as a pastor, I can't do that, you know? I don't... I should have only one wife, you know? It's a big job. And the expectation is we love Jesus above all else. We are guided by the Bible. We are loyal to our, to our family. We give generously of money, time, and love. We embody the church vision together. We do not remain the same. We develop. Develop. <laughs> Thank you. You know, my brother-in-law is a state or a traditional pastor in, in Switzerland. And he's saying, okay, you, you read that. Can you show me the, again, please? And you can write it down. Can you show me? Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's not your, it's your fault. Not your fault. I don't want to blame you. Okay, you can write it down. Okay, what we, what we expect, we love Jesus above all else. We are guided by the Bible. We are loyal to our family. We give gener generously of money, time, and love. We embody the church vision together. And we do not remain the same. We develop. My brother-in-law is a, a, a traditional pastor. And he's saying, hey, that's not normal. You, you have this expectation, but I never could have this expectation for my leaders, because in a state church, you only have to be a member. You don't have to, be, uh, to have a relationship, a personal relationship with God. Uh, when someone is a member, then he can be everything. So he can be a leader, he can, he can do everything. Now, we have fantastic leaders here. We have a core team, actually. Tilo and Christoph, they were there from the beginning, and they were always very um, church-oriented, they, they spent a lot, a lot of time, a lot of energy that we have this kind of church. And um, in the next few weeks, we want to double, or more than double, the team, the, the, the core team, because the core team is the core team with the pastors and also the lead the leaders. So actually we have 31 lead the leaders. So at the end of May, we have uh, a four or five days uh, leadership meeting, training days in Austria, and where we are together, where we speak about the church vision and how we can improve the church here, ISF Stuttgart. You know, I want you to show, I want you to show uh, statistics from pastors' resources from the U.S. They said that every months, quit, 1,500 are quitting their jobs. And 50% are divorced. 40% commit adultery. 70% of pastors are depressed and, and uh, they give up. 80% are pastors and women are discouraged or feel incapable what they do. And 80% of all who graduated a study, theology study, uh, are giving up after five years. You know, I, I'm a pastor since 17 years. By God's grace, thank you. That's God's, God's grace. It's not normal, you know. And I want to ask you, does it make sense to pray for our leaders? Yes? Yes, it makes sense. You know, because the enemy wants want to, to attack 
the leadership, the inner core, because he wants to attack the, to destroy the whole church. And the second circle, Sarah is helping me because I'm not really capable to do that. I had always a little bit problem with drawing in the kindergarten, yeah, you had to draw this kind. So you see me uh, from above, like it's then, then Google Earth view, yeah? See, you see everything, yeah, All right, like, well, that's me, yeah? Okay. The second circle is, are the team leaders and the small group posts. So what do we expect from them? In Acts 6, verse 3 is written, brothers, Jews, or the apostles, Jews, seven of your men, they must be known as men who are wise and full of the Holy Spirit. We will turn this important work over to them. So what they had to do. Do they have to, to evangelize India? Do they have to go to the new to the units, United States to, to, to tell the gospel? Not at all. What they had to do is to care about the widows, to feed them, to care about where they can sleep, what kind of job maybe they can do. Very practical. But for this really very practical job, they choose those who had a character, who were filled by the Holy Spirit. That's really, woo, it's mind-blowing, no? In this circle, we expect, and now we have the, the words on your screen, we are guided by the Bible, yes? We love Jesus, we are guided by the Bible, we are loyal to our family, we give generously of money, time, and love, we embody the church vision together. We do not remain the same, but we develop. So that's what I said. That's why we go to Austria for a few days. We want to develop our skills and leadership. We want to improve, to improve, to give the best. That's always our style. So that's always what we intend to do. What we, we want to be better in one year, in two years. We want to improve everything. When you want to be a leader, and you can be a leader, in the, in the circle, in the second circle, you can be, you can start a, a small group tonight if you want. Yes, if you are saying, okay, I, I want to be part of ISIS Stuttgart, I, I want to be, I want to lead a small group, I, I want to be a spirit-filled person, I want to be led by the Holy Spirit, I want to have, I, I want to, to to serve with who I am and what I have. Then you are invited to do that. So that's the expectation that you, uh, that you love Jesus and that you're guided by the Bible and uh, loyal to your family. In 1 Corinthians 5 we read, But there is what I am writing to you. You must stay away from anyone who claims to be a believer, but does those things. You stay away from anyone who commits sexual sins, who who always wants more and more things. Stay away from a person who worships status of gods or who tells lies about others. Stay away from anyone who gets drunk or who cheats. Don't even eat with a person like that. Whoa, that's really hard. So you're saying, okay, we are church, we welcome everyone. What does it mean? You know, sometimes only a few people can destroy a whole church because they are cheating, because they are saying, okay, I, I, I will worship God, yes, but on Monday they are totally different. And that is what a church destroys. It's also what you, you yourself, yourself destroys because you have like a double character. You have like a, you have like a double, double person, sometimes like this, sometimes like this. And Paul says, no, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be with them. Choose wisely with whom you are surrounded. Do you understand me? Okay, and the second or the third circle is, the third circle has a, 
another influence, another uh, accountability. The third circle, you can write it down on your outline if you want. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. Um, the third circle is the church. If you want to attend the church, because there should be a difference be between someone who is in the church and a person who is not going to church, who doesn't listen to, to uh, biblical uh, sermons, a church has, or someone who wants to be, a, uh, or uh, wants to attend a church, should start to begin to love Jesus. Maybe you are here, and you, you know, okay, I want to love Jesus, but you have never expressed it. You have really had a lot of hindrances doing that. And I want to encourage you, begin to love Jesus. Then the second thing, orient yourself to the Bible. Start reading the Bible. Because the Bible gives you the inner security that you need for your personal life. I really need the Bible. Without the Bible, I can't go through the weeks without reading the Bible because it's like I don't have a, a, a foundation. Like I'm, I'm flying, but there is no good reason for, to do that. Then the second thing, the third thing, sorry, is discover God's sexuality. Maybe you had a very messy life. You feel, you're feeling dirty tonight. You know, God's blood is enough that he can clean you, that he can give you a restart, that he can renew you from the, from the, from the scratch on. Then become a 10% donator. It's not because of me, because of the church, because of you, because I believe, I believe very, I believe it very deeply in my heart. When you start donating, really, then your life over time will be blessed in a tremendous way. I don't say that only because I, I'm the pastor and I want to have money. No, because of you, because you bless yourself. Learn more and more value the church. That you you really appreciate being here, and that you come <laughs> punctual because we are starting on time. Yes, there is a band, a fantastic band, and, and you want to be part of it. Then win people for Jesus and the church. You know, in Exodus 19 is written, "But you will be a kingdom of priests to serve me. You will be holy nation. That is what you must tell the." Israelites. So Moses was told that he should tell it to the to the to the whole um, to the to the Israelites to the whole congregation. Not only the pastors, not only the priests. He said, "Hey, you are you are holy. You you should you are supposed to be holy in this world um, because you are you are determined to be the light of the world." And every one of you is a priest. Wherever you are, in your university, in your job, wherever you are, you are, you are the influence. You are, you are here. You are, you are in the circle and you influence the world because you are a priest. Yes, do you know that? Can you say to your neighbor, you're a priest? Maybe you have never knew it before, but now you should know it. <laughs> Jesus said, when something happened like what's happened in Corinth, that someone um, is falling in deep sin, then Jesus said, if your brother sins against you, go to him, or against someone, so the sin is always against someone, tell him what he did wrong, keep it between the two of you, if he listens to you, you have won him back. So how can we win people back? How can we bring people back when they went out of a community? That's the question. And Jesus said, hey, start, that's the first point. Find the private conversation. Find the private conversation. Eye-to-eye -eye contact. Speak about what's happened. And 
then say, hey, I observed something. Could it be that? Can I help you in a way? Then all the thing is protect the church, protect the church and take two or three witnesses. Because sometimes t the sin is really crazy. I often also have uh, conversations be that I don't want to be alone because it's really too dangerous because when I say something, everyone can take it and say, Dan has said, and then I need witnesses and they say, okay, they were with me and we said it together or they listened and I said it. In Matthew 18, 16, it's written, but what if he won't listen to you? Then take one or two others with you. Scripture says every matter must be proved by the words of two or three witnesses. You know, sometimes you, ha sometimes you have to protect the church because the church is like uh, a brand. And when someone is, is acting with the name of, for example, ICF and and he has not a proper life. He can destroy uh, the brand of ICF. So I have to be very, very sure as a pastor that I have a proper life. That doesn't mean that I don't, don't, don't have uh, weaknesses. I have weaknesses, but I have to be accountable before one or two or three people. So I have three advisors. They can look into my heart, and when the core team is saying, hey, we recognize something about Dan, what's going on? They can tell it to them, and they can say, okay, Dan has really a problem with that. So we are really very open to protect the church. And the third thing, make the secret public. In Matthew 18, 17 is written, but what if he also refuses to listen to the witnesses? Then tell it to the church, and what if he refuses to listen even to the church? Then don't treat him as your brother. That's really very hard. Treat him as you would treat an ungodly person or a tax collector. And now, maybe you heard about Marseille Church, uh, Mark Driscoll. A few months ago, he had uh, to quit his job. He had to give up the whole church with 11 locations. Every location is now independent because Mark Driscoll, they he wanted to be a best-selling uh, author. And he took money from uh, the church to buy books and to give it away for free. And hundred thousands of US dollars, he was not clear with that. He was not proper with that. So he had to to quit the job, that's not cool. You know, everything is because we are responsible. And also you, you are responsible. When you are sitting here, you can be a member of the ICF Stuttgart, or feeling like a member. You can say, okay, I'm only a visitor. Yeah, then you are not responsible for, for any, anything. But you can start being responsible. You know, the deeper purpose of, of a congregation, of a church like we are, the big, 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 big purpose is that we love God. He's a com community in itself. Three persons in one. And that we love people around us. In John 13, it's written, If you love one another, everyone will know you are my disciples. It's so easy, this sentence, to understand intellectually, right? But it's often so hard to love and to understand, to express love. And we want to be the church who expresses love in a small group, in, in, the, in the services, wherever we come together because 
people from this world should see it, should recognize, whoa, there's a difference between those who are celebrating and worshiping God and, and those who do not do that, okay? <laughs> who else can love in this deep deeper sense than we can do because God loved us. We are the most beloved people. More than every superstar is loved. We are the beloved one. And we can love each other. And I want to invite you to this adventure. I invite you to the ICF congregation that you will be part of it because you like it. And we want to celebrate that Sunday for Sunday and improving and improving and getting bigger and uh, growing and everything is so fantastic and I want to invite you for that. Be blessed. Amen.